everyone, this is Laura from OMG Creations and today starting with Laura is all about making a laundry bag that you can take with you when you're traveling and you can throw in like your lingerie, your dirty underwear, your dirty socks. I mean this can even be used for when you're going to the gym, throwing your dirty socks, your dirty shoes, you know. Well, this is what we're going to be making today. This is something that I came up with. I've, I saw lots of pictures of this but I decided to make my own. And all you really need are two pieces of fabric and ribbon and bam, it's done. And you can make them, make them in so many different colors. And these are for my sister-in-law my sister. And as you know or not, we're going traveling this week. So I'm going to be making mine today and I'll be teaching you guys how to do that. So let's go on to the table to see what materials we need today. This is a great project because you can use you know scraps of fabrics and this is even great for quarter um, fat quarter pieces of fabric and that's what I used today and then I just trimmed it down so you need two pieces of fabric they can be coordinating they can be totally different it's totally up to your taste and you'll need rulers you'll need your marking tools rotary cutter cutting mat and your fabric scissors so before we get started make sure that your pieces are ironed just so they are nice clean and crisp so that's what I'm gonna go do right now and then we'll be back okay so now our fabric is all nicely pressed and we are going to I forgot to mention that we are using cotton fabric today so we need two tops and two bottoms so two A and two B so for the first one this is going to be seven by 10 and then the bottom one is going to be 10 by 10 square okay and like I said you need two of each piece and let's get to the sewing machine and see what we gotta do next okay so we need to make a few marks on our top piece of the bag so we're gonna flip it over and you want to use the wrong side and then you can use any sort of marking tool for this and we're going to make a mark at one inch and then also at two inch. And I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna stretch this so it's at the end. And I'm gonna do the same to this side here, to the other end. Okay, and then we want to do this with the other piece. Okay, and these marks are going to help us because we're going to iron this to create a little fold that we're going to sew together to have somewhere where the ribbon can pass through and you guys can, you know, tie it up. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to go to the ironing board right now and I'll show you guys how to do that. Okay, so we're going to fold this over where we made our line. And the bottom line kind of helps you as a guide, the second line that we made. That way you know where to fold. And this, we're folding this an inch. And that was our first mark that we made. We're just going to iron it and then we're going to fold it again. So we're going to fold it an inch again. And that way when you fold it, this is now going to be on the top. Like that. Then you want to fold the other side, just so everything is nice and crisp and flat. Okay, and we're going to do that with the second piece. Okay, and then we can go to the sewing machine again. Okay, and we're just gonna work with the wrong side facing you, and we're just gonna use a zigzag stitch. So let me set that up. And 
The way I'm doing this is I'm going to zigzag, but I want the zigzag to catch both my fabric on this end and my fabric on that end, if it makes any sense. And I will show you guys once I finish this what I mean. And sometimes when you do your zigzag stitch, and sometimes you tend to move the fabric so it won't like the point won't catch on this side and on that side so I just move the fabric a little bit so so now this point catches the side and that point catches that side and it's fine to make adjustments I cannot make a straight line to save my life and I cannot zigzag straight to save my life so I mean it happens And we're not going to finish this off anyways because we're going to sew up the sides. Okay, so this is what I mean. So when I sewed, I made sure that the zigzags were on this point and on this point too. That way the flap doesn't open up. So not only does it look nice on this side, but on your right side it looks nice too. And we're going to do that with the second piece. So making sure that my fabric... Oh, there you go. That my fabric that I folded and the wrong side of the fabric are basically in the middle of my presser foot. So when I sew, like I said, that zigzag catches both of those pieces of fabric. to miss like sewing the flap then just go back and restitch it that's okay and it seems like I'm kind of missing it a little bit but we'll see when I go back and I'm just gonna adjust it a little bit I might be missing it And I really hope I didn't mess this one up, but it sometimes, sometimes it happens. Oh, yep. Okay, so you see how my zigzags are mostly in this fabric here. But luckily, I caught most of it. So this won't open up, but I think that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, and now we're going to attach this piece to the bottom piece. Okay, and for this, we want our fabric to be right sides facing each other and wrong sides facing out and we kind of want to line up both pieces and we just pin and you do that with the second piece Okay, and then we're just going to sew along this line here, and we're just using a straight stitch for that. Go away, Laura's friends. And I'm just using a one-fourth seam allowance on this. And what's really helpful about machines is that sometimes they tell you. So I have this little guide here for one fourth, and I'm just gonna use a straight stitch on this. I'm gonna go forward. 
I'm gonna back stitch a little bit and then sew forward again. And then take the pins off. And then, do you want to get close to the end? Back stitch. And then continue sewing. Okay, and then you do that with the second piece, and it's going to look something like this. And we're just going to iron this flat so it has a much more um, cleaner look. Okay, so we want our fabric to be facing down. Well, right side facing down. And normally, when you have a big seam allowance, you're able to kind of open this to sew and it lays flat. But since our seam allowance was little today, we are just going to iron it directly, just flat and down. And that should be no problem. And if it's a little off like mine is, like the tops don't match the bottom, that's fine. Because once we sew it all together, it'll match up. Okay, now that we're all done ironing, let's continue sewing. Okay, so now we have to sew up the sides, the bottom and the other side. And we're just going to flip it over so we want right sides facing together. And then the wrong side facing you. And the way I'm going to sew this is I'm going to match up the top. That way I know the tops are matched up. And even though my bottoms may not be matched up, that's okay. And I'm just going to put a little pin there so it doesn't move. Put a few on the side. Put a few on this side. Okay. And then let's just pin all the way around. And put as many pins as you'd like, however you feel comfortable. The more pins you have, the less it's going to move. So it's really all up to you. And how comfortable you are. And I put them this way, that way, when you're passing the fabric through the sewing machine, it's easier for you to take the pins out. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so when you start sewing, you're going to start sewing from the zigzag down. And then you're going to meet the other zigzag. And we're just using a simple straight stitch. We're using one-fourth of an inch seam allowance. So, let's get started. And then we're going to back stitch. And it's nice to have your pin cushion right next to you. So you're just taking the pins out and then putting the pin cushion in. I mean, taking the pins out and put it into the pin cushion. Okay, and then just start sewing. Whoops, I forgot to take my pin, pin out. Okay, so I want to get low enough to about one-fourth of an inch left of fabric. So I'd say about there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my needle down. I will turn, bring the presser foot up. I'm gonna turn this and it should be about one fourth of an inch and then we just start sewing again
Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna sew until there's about one fourth of an inch left of fabric, which looks like that. We're gonna turn this over and just start. Well, it looks like it's a little over one fourth of an inch, as you can tell. So you just turn your work over again and maybe put in a stitch or two. And I think that will work. And then you put your foot down, your needle down, and then you just start sewing. We're going to sew all the way up to the zigzag. And then we're going to back stitch. And then sew again. Awesome. Now cut your loose threads that you have. We're going to take this over to the ironing board and iron it one more time and then put in the finishing touches and finish it off with a ribbon. Okay, so we're just going to turn this inside out. And then kind of push out the corners a little bit. And we're going to sew this flat. And this corner needs a little pushing out. Is that good? Okay, and we also need ribbon now, so we can make the little tie that goes on top. And I used about 30 inches of ribbon, and for this you want to make sure that your ribbon is one inch wide or less. That way it can fit through the little casing we made here. And you can use a safety pin to feed the ribbon through the casing, or... I have this fancy little gadget here that my sister-in-law got me. Thank you. It's called an easy threader. It's basically a flexible needle. So I'm just going to put the ribbon in there. Then I'm going to put it in through this side. And then my ribbon's just going to go in. My ribbon goes in through here. And you would do the same thing with the safety needle. The safety needle, the safety pin. And then you want to put it in through the other hole. Okay, and it's going to look something like, like this. And I just put in, I just like to make little knots here. And I just knot it twice. And then I'll do the same to this. Okay, and cut off any excess that you don't want. And if you cut an angle, it's less likely to have little strands like that coming out. And there you have it, your own little travel laundry bag. And just pull the ribbons and you could make a little bow if you'd like or just tie it, so. And there you go. You can throw in all your dirty stuff in there and you won't have to worry about things smelling in your suitcase or in your backpack. Wasn't this easy? Well, thank you guys for watching Threading with Laura today. I know I haven't made a video in a really long time, but I'm back. And I hope you guys liked this tutorial. See you guys later. Bye.